Welcome to our um, next to last unit. This is the last unit where you'll actually learn new game related stuff. And then next time, next week, we'll talk about, our next unit anyway, we'll talk about um, how to polish up your game and get ready to release it. Um, so f last time, you learned uh, how to use Boolean values in a cond expression to control branches of the program. And this is a really powerful um, new technique that's pretty much going to let you do anything you need to do in your game. You also use con conditional branching to control game objects. Today we'll write a function to calculate the distance between a two objects on a line because the big thing this week is going to be um, creating a collide predicate that's going to tell us tell you um, when when two objects hit each other. Um, but first, let's change your update player function to be able to move left and right. I know that was bugging you that that you know it's a rocket in, in your example game and it can only move up and down and I, I think maybe yours doesn't even move up and down. So let's let's um, make it so that, that 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 player can move any direction. And then I'll give you an example of changing your player image. I'll show you what I changed mine to. So go ahead, open your um, game file. That's yours called Game Joe. Mine's called Game Two. So we'll um, do a couple of things to to make it so we can update our player correctly. So I already did um, one part that I didn't see in yours. So. Uh, but we won't use that. I'm going to put a box around this to comment it out. Where's that? All right, just because I don't want to. So, but we'll, we'll do the contract from the beginning. And then after I do this, you can pause and do it in yours. Let me get. Let's get it working first. So we're going to do update player. And instead of just taking in a number and a string, which is the key press. And so um, it'll take in up, down, um, it, you know, whatever or letter, whatever it takes in as the key press. So instead of taking in just the key press um, and one number to go just up and down, um, it, it's fine for it to take in two numbers. And we'll say it takes in a number and a number and a string. And it needs to return, if you remember that thing from before we updated... Um, like here's uh, update danger, that now it returns this thing called a posin, which is a position type object that's made with a structure, a struct command. Um, and so um, if you remember the way that's used, um, you can put multiple things inside it. So um, in fact, let's see if we can find the, oh no, it's not, remember it's not here, I don't think. Let's see, look for struct. Yeah, it's not here, but um, you can define your own, um, and they 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 made one called a posin, which um, has two parts, an X and a Y. So it's as far as uh, rackets concerned, it's one thing. It's it's a posin, and we know that inside a posin, there's an X and a Y coordinate. So there's two numbers inside it. So um, that's what it's going to do. Let's put a purpose statement. Um, Update the player position, which we'll call a posin, given uh, an x coordinate, a y coordinate, and a key press. So that to be the number. That's an uh, x is a number, y is a number, and the string will be a key press. And then let's make a template. Define update date player. It's going to take in an x and a y and a key, and then we're going to give back some kind of posin. So in when with this these key press things. Um, we need to use our new power of cond. So let's we're going to put in a cond, and we know that cond is going to have some branches. So I'm just going to put in a couple right here for now. 
and then I'll put these parentheses back together. All right, so that's the way things are gonna gonna go. Um, and we want to, um, let's just go ahead and make this work right and do an up and a down and a left and a right. Okay. So um, that's going to be based on the key press. So we need to check, and that's why I kept this here, because I know that I'm going to do it this way. So we know cons work where it's going to here's a test and the result. I don't know what the result's going to be yet. All right, but that's what it's going to be. And I'm going to have one test. So we're going to go up, down, left, right. So let's change that up, down, left, right. And then con lets you have an else, which we want to use. Okay, so that's the way cons work, remember. They've got these brackets with all the different conditions, and then they all, all inside the brackets they always have two parts: a test and a result. So if it's, if the key that was pressed, and, and this thing runs um, twenty like twenty eight times a second or something, so it's constantly running and checking to see if you're pressing a key. And if you do, then it does the thing. If you don't, if nobody's pressing a key, then it's doing. The else and let's actually we can go ahead and let's do the else what do we want to do if no key is pressed well that means we don't want to do anything we just want X and Y to come back but we need to put it in the form of a posin so the way we make a posin is we say make posin X Y so that's gonna means a posin is going to be returned and it's going to be exactly the same X and Y. So we're just doing nothing, essentially, um, except passing back the exact same position. So when it gets called, it updates it with the exact same position. So let's replace our template with those because we know it's the right format. It doesn't do the right thing yet. Because right now, no matter what key you press, all right, let's look at that. No matter what key you press, it'll be the same thing. So let's do some examples. Probably should have done some earlier. So, example, update, player, and if he's at 200, two, uh, let's do 200, 100, right? So that would be over 200 and up 100, so somewhere down here, right? Um, and I press the letter Q, all right? That's nothing. Right, that's not anything, we, we don't have that defined yet in our game. So, I should get back a pausing. Make pausing 200, 100. Right, so I should get back a pausing with make 200, 100. Um, so, essentially, it doesn't move anywhere. So, let's try that. I should have uh, done an example a little sooner. We'll see if we introduced any problems. No problems. Good. All right, and, it, and it's telling us, hey, all I ran was the else. I didn't run, you didn't press up, down, left, or right. I didn't do anything, and that's fine. All right, now let's make a... So every time you have a condition, you need to have at least one test for each of those. So let's make four conditions for more conditions. All right, if I press left, then that's changing the x-axis. So we want to do something different here. And what do we want to do? We want to say, um, we want my 200 to go down by, um, how far are we going to go? 20. Let's go down by 20. So we'll make it jump over 20. So the way we go down was we'll say minus 200 is my starting one, 20. Right, so this is going to take my x coordinate, which is starting at 200, and it's going to turn it into 180. And then it's going to 
y is going to be the same, so that I'm, I'm not moving up or down, so that's moving left. All right, and now let's do right. Sometimes I just line these up just for fun. All right, let's see. If we're going to move right, then the y coordinate is going to stay the same. The x coordinate is going to change. I'm going to add my original 200 and 20. So I'm moving to the right on the x coordinate. I'm adding, so it's going to be 220 on the x coordinate. That's going to be to the right. If I move up, well, let's, let's go down first. So we, we'll do the same thing as go direction. So let's go down. All right, now my x coordinate is going to be the same. But I'm going to change the y. Oops. I like to just just so I get all the parentheses right, what I'm doing. All right, here's the Y, and I'm going to take my original 100 and subtract 20. Right, so I'm going to move down. All right, that makes moving up pretty easy. I'm going to leave the same X. I'm going to have my original 100 plus 20. So when I move my Y up, instead of being 100, which is down here somewhere, it's going to be 120, which is a little higher. All right. Now we haven't done that yet, right? Right now, else gives me back the same position, and these guys all give me back the same position. So we should have four of these five fail. Let's try that. All right, failed, 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 good. No errors, just failures, so that test failure, so that's good. All right, now, let's try to um, make it so that these guys now do the right thing. Okay, so when um, somebody, these are a different order, that's okay. When somebody presses up, we want, let's just copy our example. And replace the right hand side which remember this is what if this is the test and this is the result if that test is true and instead of using these numbers though I'm gonna say X is X and this is Y so if somebody presses the up key it's gonna leave the X position alone right so it's not gonna move left and right it's gonna move up or down and it's gonna move up because I'm adding 20 to whatever Y was all right, so now let's keep doing that. Down, down, is this guy right here? Move the consequence. All right, so down, we're gonna leave the X the same. And we're gonna make the Y. Y is gonna go subtract it, left. All right, we're going to leave the Y the same, and the X is going to go here, and this is going to move it down, or move it left, move the X coordinate left by 20. One more, which is uh, right. I'm going to leave the Y coordinate the same, it's so not going to go up or down, and X. 20. All right, that looks pretty good. Our parentheses all look good. Let's run it and see if we pass those tests. I don't see any test failures here. Here's my rocket going up. Here's my rocket going down. Here's my rocket going left. Here's my rocket going right. Now I'm going to press some other keys. Good. I'm pressing all kinds of keys in the middle, and those don't do anything. Oops, my my star uh, space is is uh, connected to the to the the, the mystery. Um, all right, so that's cool. Except most rockets that look like this, these old time rockets, don't go left and right. So I have downloaded. I just searched for transparent bare images, and I downloaded something called Bare Transparent. 
let's change my player. I'm going to say define player bitmap quote dot png. So that's what it was. Okay, now let's see if that it's a little better. Ah, all right. He moves left and he moves right and he moves up and down, but he is quite um, large. So let's scale him, if you remember that image function. So I'm going to select that whole thing, do a left paren, scale. And scale takes a number and an image. Um, so let's make it like 0.2 size. So it's, it's going to be quite a bit smaller. Let's see how that does. All right, good. Now he's about the same size. Um, we still need to look and see how we get these guys to start in the right place. But now he moves left and right, up and down. He shoots humongous stars. Let's uh, let's scale our stars too. Where's that mystery? So I'm gonna select that whole thing. Put a paren um, scale point. Um, we'll try that one point two also. Of course, that one, since since I made this size, I could have just made that size smaller, but we're already using scales. All right, so now he moves left and right. He can move kind of stair-step diagonally, and he shoots stars from his mouth, so that's pretty cool. All right, so here is, um, if you need to pause and see how to, the scale works. If not, I'm going to go down to... All right, I don't need this anymore. I'm going to erase that. All right, so here is the new version of player. So make sure you understand that. Put some examples of your own in there and update your player so that it looks like that. So pause here and do that. Okay, great. Now let's go look at a couple of uh, our new thing for today. All right, so we're just going to think about the x-coordinate. Um, so two objects moving through space, each with its own x and y coordinates, when do their edges overlap? So that's what we're going to talk about. So here's an, an, an ellipse with a radius of 1, another one with a radius of 1.5. The circles will overlap if the distance between their centers is less than the sum of their radii. So let's break that down. First of all, you know that um, a circle or an ellipse, the ray that goes from the center to the edge, or the line center that goes from the center to the edge, is called the radius. And that's a Latin word that ends with U, S. So to, to make it plural, you can say radii, radii. So radii just means plural of radiuses, radius. And so we know that there's a radius here, and there's a radius here. As these things get closer and closer together, Right, the radius, the radii, will eventually touch. And where will they be touching? They will be touching when they sum together. Right, so right now, the distance between the center of blue and the center of red is radius of red plus the radius of blue plus in between. Well, if we make in between down to zero, then they're going to be touching when the radius of red and the radius of blue are the, uh, right next to each other. They're just the distance between the two centers is just the sum of the two radii with nothing in between. So if we go one little bit further, one pixel further, closer together, then that means that the distance between the two centers will be um, less than the sum of the two radii. So that makes sense. So, we can look at it with the numbers. If this is a radius of 1 and this is a radius of 1.5, then the sum of their radii is 2.5. Alright, so but how do we tell the distance between their two centers? 4 minus 1 is 3. Well, yep, that's true. Um, the center of that is 4 and the center of that is 1. So the distance between them is 4 minus 1. It's where the number line is on this one and the number line is on that one. 
would the distance between them change if the circle swapped places? So let's think about that. That means the distance, um, so if this was centered at 1, and this one was centered at 4, there would still be a gap in between because their radii didn't change. So no, the distance wouldn't change. Now this equation might change. Um, instead of blue minus red, you may have to say red minus blue, and then it would still be 4 minus 1 is 3. Or we talk about the absolute value where the distance doesn't change even if it's you know, no matter how you do this. So 1 minus 4 is negative 3, but the distance is still 3. It's a positive number. All right, so let's look at the word problem line length on page 28 of your book. All right, here's page 28. Write a function called line length, which takes in two numbers and returns the positive difference. Right, Remember, that's what I was just talking about. The, the absolute value is what they call that in algebra. The, it's just the positive difference between them. It should always subtract the smaller number from the bigger one. And if they are equal, then it should return 0. So they gave us a way to do it. We take the smaller number, subtract it from the bigger one, or, if they're the same, then we'll return zero. So it gave us some rules to do for that. So let's look at our game function first. Said we should have one called line length. Oh, there's line length. Wait a minute. Line length, okay. All right. Let's see. All right. Let's um. So let's work through the um, the word problem on on page twenty eight. I'm just gonna do it in a new document here. All right, and so what does it say? Line length. It's going to take in two numbers and return the positive difference between them. So it's going to take in a number and a number. And it's going to return, well, the positive difference is going to be a number, but let's just go on and say a positive number for the type of that. Return the positive difference between the given numbers by, and because it gave us, it gave us rules to use, so let's use them, by subtracting the smaller number from the bigger, by subtracting the smaller number from the bigger. Otherwise, zero. All right, so let's make a template to find line length. And it's going to take in two numbers. Let's call them A and B. And it's going to return a number, which we don't know what it is, so let's call it zero. All right, now let's look at some examples. Let's say our numbers line length. Let's say our numbers are 1 and 3, like they did. 1 and 3. Um, all right. Well, the difference between 1 and 3 is 2. So we, you know, if we say 3 minus 1, we get 2. If we say 1 minus 3, well, that's negative 2, but they want the positive number, so it's 2. And it says, subtract the smaller from the bigger. 
So we say 3 minus 1, and that's 2. Or in uh, racket notation, we could say minus 3, 1. All right, let's do another one. Line length. Let's do uh, 5 and 3. Oops. All right. Five and, all right, 5 and 2. All right. Well, we want to say minus 5, 2, because that's what it said to do. All right. All right. I'm going to run it. We should get these two should fail because that was 0. Um, oh, got to put... Um, this thing so it knows where to find um, all the functions like examples I was just reading. I just, I'm just reading the errors and doing whatever it says. It said I didn't like it because it wasn't saved. Um, didn't like that because it's not in the right location. Gonna go up one. All right, I'm going to just move all this over to my other thing. I'm going to call it line length 2 because there's already one in here. So I'm going to call it line length 2. Oh, no, that was the problem. There's no, it's not called examples. It's called example. All right, let's get rid of this. Sorry. Um, what's wrong with that? Okay, I finally got my syntax right. Um, all right, good. These both failed, but they um, no other errors. And we expected them to fail because I'm just doing zero here. Actually, though, we even we do have another. Um, if they're equal, it should return zero. So actually, we need to put in one that. Uh, so if they're both five then it says it's supposed to return zero. So actually we should have one failed, I mean uh, one pass just kind of accidentally because we're returning zero. Yep, so we've got two failed. All right, now let's fix this and make it work. Well, if we're going to do two different things, we're going to have to check and see which is the bigger and smaller. And the way we check things is by using a con. So I'm going to put in a con. And I know I'm going to have brackets and brackets. And let's see, how many are we going to have? We can, one bigger, one smaller, one the, or the other way, or the else. So the bigger one from the smaller one. So there's two ways that can happen. Well, there's two ways we can do these with, with, with A and B. Either A is bigger than B, or B is bigger than A, um, or they're equal. So, let's test, I'm going to say greater than, A, B. All right, if A is greater than B, then I want to say minus A, B. All right, because so in this is a case like this, A is greater than B, 5 is greater than 2, I want to subtract B from A. 
All right. If B is greater than A, or no, sorry. Uh, yes, B is greater than A. Then I want to subtract B from A. And we have an example like that. 3 is greater than 1, and we say minus 3, 1. Otherwise, else, 0. All right, now let's run that. Expected 2, but got 0. A is greater than B. Oh, okay, I swapped. You can't, I, I changed the, this and swapped them around. So that was testing the same thing. So we've got to do one or the other. All right, if A is greater than B, now this one tests is B is greater than A. That's why we do tests. All right, so that worked correctly. And we can say line length 3.777 and 9.4 you know so now we can do any one we want and that's the line length all right cool all right so now let's go to your game file and it says we had a line length in there so let's find that i'm going to go to the top and control f and say line length There it is. All right, and good. So I could have cleaned mine up because in my version, let's go back and look. Well, this says, if this is true, then do this. If this is true, then do this. Well, with only two branches like that, it turns out that I can say, All right, if A is greater than B, then subtract B from A. That's what we did. Otherwise, flip it. And what, what about the zero case? Well, if they're both equal, then, all right, is, is, is so I say it's five and five. Is five greater than five? No. So this will fail. And this one, so it'll do this one. And five minus five is zero. So that's fine. So I kind of hard-coded the zero case, and they just use logic to say, oh, there's only two things that can happen. Either it's bigger, either A is bigger, or it's not. And the not case is zero, includes zero, and it work, the math works out completely fine. And then they have some examples. So that's line length, um, which is going to, com which computes the distance between two points on the number line. So what would we expect from line length to five? Well, there's three difference and the same thing for that one. We already just tested it. We just looked at the conditions. All right, now, um, this is kind of a preview of next time. What about um, a distance on a plane? So if you're, you remember from geometry that um, two points on a line, and if you move off the line, then you have um, a plane. So that's what this, the number, the coordinate system we're using in the, the game is a two-dimensional plane. So how do we calculate the distance between objects moving in two dimensions or on a plane? So line length can calculate the vertical and horizontal distances, right? So, so line length works whether we're going on the X or the Y, that line length will work, because it's only one dimension. Um, but it doesn't tell us how far the two part the two centers are, um, because we know that the distance between the diagonal is different than the distance if we go left and up. But we can make a triangle with sides A, B, and C. We know that A and B are the horizontal and vertical different distances, which we can use line length, right? We can use line length to go between the point here and the vertex, and the point here and the vertex, all right? And so what we want to find out is C, which is the distance between the two coordinates that we're really interested in. 
So line length can be used to calculate A and B, and then we're going to have to write something else to calculate C. You remember from geometry, so this is a right triangle, and the, the side opposite the uh, right angle is called the hypotenuse. So look at that word, remember it. All right, and that's what we really want to find for the distance is the hypotenuse, the length of the hypotenuse. So think back to our collision detection. We know that objects will collide if the hypotenuse is less than the sum of their radii, right? Because if it was equal, let's just think about shrinking this triangle so that red and blue come closer and closer together. If it was equal to the sum of their radii, then they would be barely touching, would be tangent to each other. So if, the, if we know the length of the hypotenuse, we can determine whether these two um, objects have uh, collided or not, whether they overlap. So that's what we'll look at next time. Um, so today you added some more interactivity to your game. You were a function to calculate the distance between two objects on a line. Oh, and if you haven't gone in and filled out page 30, um, let me stop right here. Right, so you can pause here so that you can fill out your uh, page 28, page 28. So make sure you um, fill out the contract for that. So we, we wrote that function and tested it. And next time, we'll extend that function to calculate the distance between two objects on a two-dimensional plane.